What's up guys? I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I haven't done a video like this on my personal channel for probably about three, four months or so. Whenever we finish the Daily Stoic 365 days of Stoic wisdom. But uh, I've been creating videos every day. Uh, posting up on this channel, racing videos every day, but on another channel, news. So have, if you don't know where that is, I've been posting every day, actually multiple times a day. So that's on Web3 and crypto news and these types of things. But today I wanted to read out a newsletter post. I don't always do this with my newsletters, but sometimes I just feel it's just there's passion inside of me, right? There's, there's just something that I want to share on video. And I enjoy writing the content. I enjoy writing the newsletters and the blog posts and these types of things. But sometimes, just sometimes, I just want to read it. And just maybe, maybe it's mostly for my own edification so that I can hear what this thing is and maybe, maybe help manifest these ideas into the reality, into the world, and maybe just preaching to myself the values and purpose that I have. Maybe that's the deeper nuance. Anyway. Let's talk about the job of product development. I have sometimes wondered what it would be like to plug into the matrix, where you can download knowledge and experience other realities and people. This would be a huge dystopian power for good. The playing field of knowledge is completely leveled. Zero barrier to entry. Anyone and everything can learn anything. Then, with any motivation at all, you could embark on a journey to do that thing build that thing, or create that thing, whatever they want. The other benefit would be the ability to know others truly and how others truly feel. We can plug into personalities and different bodies and experiences. I, I did say this was dystopian, right? However, and it's powerful, but frightening if you let your mind wander into the darker realm of possibilities. Very Black Mirror-ish, if you ask me. I don't know anything about this world outside my own experience, interaction, and perception of how things transpired. I know not of the future. Only one perspective of the past is what I have, my own heuristic, my own life experience. That's all I got. I once heard Eric Weinstein say that our past is never actually reality. It is only our perception from one viewpoint. Everyone else that was there experienced something completely different than you. Your past is merely a perspective. I like that. I think that's a, I think this quote from Eric Weinstein is an amazing quote. It reminds us that it's the world around us, the reality around us is just our perspective. If we take these words to heart, then the job of product development is to feed a shared perception of value and a shared perspective of value. Given that everyone's perspective and perception of anything is completely relative to them and them alone, then the product, then the job of product development is to find shared values in the, of, the, of the market. We assume to know the needs of the market until we collect real data. And real data is two things. It's oversimplified here, but it's really just two things. It's outcome-based metrics, number one. And number two, executing on hypotheses based on metrics. Now, we all know, and people who've taken my classes in Scrum and Agile, they know that Scrum and Agile creates these tight feedback loops in product development. The faster you build, the faster you garner data. The faster you can execute with more information. Finding these shared values in the market should be the deeper focus of product development, not just on features and functions alone. The deeper human values are the real reason people stick to an application, even if it's just merely entrenchment and convenience that they won't switch to a competitor. That is human enough, and you want to reduce the friction to uh, their ability to enjoy the application so they want to be there. Now, life is just like Agile. We learn by doing. Nobody could have calculated how it turned out anyway, really. We need to remember this same lesson for product development. Number one, we desire data quickly. The best way to get data is through feedback. Number two, to get feedback, we must build something. Number three, to get feedback quickly, we must build it quickly. Number four, to build quickly, we must break down work. Number five, to break down work, we need people to work together to break it down. Number six, for people to work together frequently, we must establish engagement patterns 
and have operational systems that allow for speed of engagement. Number seven, speed of engagement allows for speed of building. And finally, number eight, speed of building allows for quicker feedback loops. This is all very much essentially agile in Scrum. Find every way that you can break down work, increase feedback loops, and gather data. These principles should drive us to questioning our current narrative, our current processes, and our old behaviors. Can we do it better? This also works in life. Forced change equals new feedback. So, I've been heads down for a while, guys. So, I've been building. Finally, code to keyboard, keyboard to code, and I'm coming out of the unknown. With all of our capital deployed from our venture fund out, we've found a couple of winning investments. One of these investments we've made has touched my heartstrings, and I've decided, back in January, guys, to increase my engagement from merely an investor to a co-founder. I told you in my last blog post, you guys can check it out at the Agile, the Agile VC on Substack, I told you in this last post that it was merely a matter of time before I put keyboard to code. Over the last nine months, we have been doing the product development framework with a close community of users. That feedback loop, that feedback and iterative improvement on our application has been astounding. And we're about ready to launch our production-ready MVP. While helping clients use Agile and Scrum is always a joy, putting your money where your mouth is on your own projects makes it even more real. Can you actually do this thing called Agile? Can you actually do this thing called Scrum successfully? And I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm excited. I'm excited to announce what we've been grinding on for the better past uh, nine months in 2023. Inspect, adapt, build, and learn. I've been executing all this year, guys. And the question is, are you? All the best. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, newsletter article that I posted on substack.com slash the Agile VC. I'm excited to announce what is ge gearing up to be a really exciting end of the year launch of one of our investments as a venture fund and one that I'm now more even deeply getting into as a co-founder because oof, it's exciting. So. If you're interested, hit me up. You can find me on Twitters. Hit me up. Let me know. Maybe early access is a thing. <laughs>